skate because it, it's a place where everybody can come together in the Abbey and you just skate. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to our service here at Malmesbury Abbey. Uh, it's great to have you with us and if it's for the first time, huge welcome to you. Do get in contact with us either through the website malmesburyabbey.com or email vicar at malmesburyabbey.com. Anyway, what have we got going on this uh, Valentine's Day uh, 2021? I know we're all locked down and we can't go out for Valentine's Day. But nonetheless, we can celebrate that the Lord is with us and his great gift of love to each one of us. Well, we've got a number of things that are going on. Obviously, this being half term in February, we would have had Abbey Skate. Uh, and there's a bit of the Abbey Skate video and we're going to hear from Phil Williams um, as well. We're also going to hear from Charlotte Cox, our safety officer, but uh, she's going to be sharing our, with us what she's going to do uh, tomorrow, that sense of being a Christian during the week rather than just uh, an hour on Sunday. Well, we've also got Barney and we have got uh, readings from the Huntons. Uh, Dick is going to be preaching to us that bit in um, uh, Exodus chapter 32. And then uh, we've got uh, the prayer course trailer. Uh, the prayer course is something that we're going to be doing uh, as a Lent course over uh, Lent itself. So uh, with Ash Wednesday happening on Wednesday uh, the 17th, we're going to we're going to sort of tuck into this. Uh, it's an eight week course. So do join us over the uh, weeks of Lent and uh, the couple afterwards. All the very best. And I'm going to pray now as we head into the service. All heaven declares the glory of the Lord. We're just going to sing in a moment. And Father, we come before you and ask that you would please set wonder within our hearts, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth, that we may know you and hear your word and follow you more nearly and love you more dearly day by day. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Well, here's the song.
Hello, I'm Charlotte Cox and I'm the new Parish Safeguarding Officer for Malmesbury, Robbourne and Brokenborough. I'm very happy to be taking on this role. Um, I'm just sorry that I can't introduce myself to you personally, but this will have to do for now. I have some experience of safeguarding from um, working in schools and from my school governor role and more recently as a foster carer. This doesn't make me an expert, but it does give me a familiarity with processes and procedures. And I want to reassure you that if you get in touch with me, um, I will listen and I will know what to do with any information that you might share with me. What is safeguarding? Well, in this context, it is making sure our churches are safe places for everyone. Um, and at the moment that doesn't just mean um, bricks and mortar, but uh, church online, uh, wild church, and um, church in people's homes and visiting people. Some people are more vulnerable than others, and we have national and diocese and local processes and policies to support children and young people and vulnerable adults. At one time or other, of course, we may all be vulnerable and may struggle to protect ourselves from harm. It's all of our responsibility, everyone in church's responsibility, to make sure that we have a welcome for all and we are responsible for the safety, well-being and protection of each other. If you're worried about a child or a vulnerable adult at church, please do get in touch. You will not be wasting anybody's time. My contact details are available at the end of this service um, and are on the Abbey website. There's contact details for me and also for the diocese and the safeguarding advisor there. Uh, we have posters up in the churches with the new details on and you can find all this information from the parish office. I would like to finish, if I may, with a prayer. Dear Father, thank you for the opportunity we have as a whole church to take care of each other. We give praise to you, Lord, that you welcome children and the vulnerable and the broken to you. Help us to protect our community, to show compassion and wisdom, to hear the voices of those hurt and abused, to support victims of harm and to welcome all through your doors. Amen. Barney, what's up? What's the matter, Barney? Dear me, what's happened? You've been naughty? Oh, Barney, what have you done? You chased Catherine's cat? And then Catherine's favourite mug got broken. Barney, you are naughty, aren't you? You've been told lots of times you mustn't chase the cat. And then broken mugs can't easily be fixed, can they? What do you think you need to do, Barney, to put things right? You should say sorry to Catherine. That's right. Do you think you could do anything else? Maybe buy her a new mug? I think that's a good plan. Maybe not necessarily a, a new mug because it won't be her favourite one, but buy her something nice. A bunch of tulips would be a good idea. That would show you really were sorry, wouldn't it? Do you think she'll forgive you? I think she will do, Barney. And you must promise to try really hard not to chase her cat, mustn't you? We all make silly mistakes and bad mistakes, Barney. And we have to learn to forgive each other and to not hold on to our bad thoughts. 
you know what? It reminds me of our Bible story today, in a way. How? Well, you know, God's people had, they'd been naughty too. And they'd broken God's rules. And they had to say sorry to God. Do you think God gave them another chance? You think he probably did, because God is good. I think you're right. So let's go and find Catherine and you better say sorry to her. Well, it's great to be with you, Malmesbury Abbey. Uh, as you know, normally at this time, we'd be together face to face, bringing the skate park. So where am I? Well, I'm obviously on holiday. Um, actually, I'm not really on holiday, I'm on a drive, but I'm in the camper van. It's uh, 2.6 degrees. I've got my cup of coffee. And uh, Mr. BB just said, why don't you just say hello to the Malmesbury Abbey? team and uh, let them know what I've been doing for this last uh, 11 months. Is it really that long? So basically, uh, really, are um, it's a shame not to be with you, but we are hoping to be with you in um, Malmesbury Abbey 2022. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Um, and uh, obviously, 
it's always a, an amazing time we have with you. We always give you thanks for the great partnership that there is between Malmesbury Abbey, Christian Surfers and Christian Skaters. Um, and uh, it's uh, one of those things that I take around the country and I just say what an amazing um, congregation, community you are, the way you've embraced us and the way you've just let us um, join with you in that amazing space, which is the Abbey. Hope and pray you're all well. I'm sure some of you have been through some pretty challenging times. I myself, obviously last March when the lockdown came, realised that my life was going to change quite a bit. Uh, a lot of my life is organising events, supporting events, travelling to visit uh, communities, surfing connections throughout Europe, and obviously all that came to a quick shut. So what did I do? Well, first of all, I decided to reset I'm far better off. I've got my faith. I've got my family, although I can't always see Abby and Joe. Um, and I've got um, my community here in Nelsey. So I'm a lot, lot better than so many people could be. And of course, I've got my health. So after that sort of disappointment with what's going on and what I can't do, I decided to just turn it on its head. What can I do? And so for the first three months, I uh, joined the Nelsey COVID group. I headed up all the uh, home prescriptions from the pharmacies. We did about four and a half thousand deliveries for people's homes who were uh, shielding and isolating. I headed up the food bank, uh, rotors and all that sort of stuff to make sure all that was running well and a few other things. And I just invested for three months in my community, which i got to be honest, I got as much out of it as I think hopefully they did as well. So God definitely opened up that door because I didn't realise it existed. Uh, after that, we began to think, well, what can we do? face to face and as the year went on clearly um, it was obvious that less and less would be happening so again we began to be creative what can we do we did our Jesus Surf series online if you ever had a uh, Jesus Surf series um, how you do it online well check it out on our website www.christiansurfers.co.uk people would put in their waves online and we would judge them and it went really really well we did our national gathering online we did our annual general meeting online and actually, we learnt a lot from that. So perhaps we'll do some of those little things, particularly with regards to the meetings next year online as well. But hopefully the majority will do face to face. Um, I also had some uh, amazing experiences with nature. And I think once you can't travel all those thousands of miles, your eyes look back to your local community. And I used to get up early with my camera uh, to see the sunrise, to see the sunset just in my local vicinity and began to take pictures um, and put them online and they were an encouragement to others. Kingfisher is my new best friend um, and we were also able to do some stand-up paddleboarding in rivers near B because I couldn't get to the surf. Have I found it easy? Well, obviously not, um, but that's where, just encourage you with Psalm 77, um, some really powerful scriptures when you are struggling and if you are struggling at the moment, read it. Two halves of it, there's the challenge, there's the honesty and then what God has done. So. As I say, I'm going to leave you in the hands of Andrew and the rest of the team of this service. I think I might join you for coffee. I think that's right. Uh, mine's white with one sugar. I uh, really do want to continue to give you thanks. Thank you for your prayers and your support. Uh, for me personally, it has been a strange year, uh, but I can't wait to see you again, hopefully before Mums Rabbi 2022, and come and talk to you face to face. Anyway, take care team. Just remember God is still on the throne. And uh, God still loves us as much as anybody else in this world. God bless. Thank you so much, Phil, for updating us on your news. It's always so good to, to hear um, kind of what you're up to and, and also so encouraging to hear the way that God has been at work um, in you and, and through you um, over this last year. And I, and I know will continue to be in the future. You mentioned Psalm 77, and I don't know if Phil knows this, but actually we're, we're thinking we're in our series on the Exodus, and Psalm 77 um, talks about the way that God made a pathway through the Red Sea. So let me read the end of Psalm 77, and then I'm going to lead us in a time of prayer, praying for Phil, and also praying for young people, and, and praying for our nation as well. So Psalm 77, verse 19 and 20 say this, Your road led through the sea. Your pathway through the mighty waters, a pathway no one knew was there. You led your people along that road like a flock of sheep, with Moses and Aaron as their shepherds. 
God led his people in the Exodus on a pathway. No one knew it was there, but God knew it was there. And, and, and for us as well, we don't always know um, where God's leading us or what the future holds, but we know that God has got a pathway that he is leading us on. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Phil. We thank you for who he is. We thank you for our friendship with him. We thank you for all those who serve on his team to make Abbey Skate happen each year. And we're so sad that it, that it isn't going to be happening this February. But Lord, we want to pray for young people in our community. We want to ask that you would bless them. We ask that you would draw near to them. You would surround them with your love and your care. We pray that, that as a church family, we would be cheering them on, that we would be looking out for how we can encourage them and support them and pray for them. And we, Father, we pray for Abbey Scape when we're able to have it back in the building. We pray that it would be a time of great celebration, a time where we come together, people across our community come together and we can enjoy all the good things that you give us and your promise that, that you want to give us life to the full. I want to pray now as well, we want to pray for our schools, we want to pray for St Joseph's, Malmesbury Primary and Malmesbury Secondary. Lord, we ask for your blessing to be upon those schools. Would you guard and protect them? We pray that you would give wisdom and strength to the teachers and the, the, all the staff who serve in those schools. We pray that you would draw near to families during what is a challenging time, that they would know your closeness. We pray particularly for uh, Steve Heal, the head of our church school, and we just pray that you would strengthen him in his faith and that you would give him wisdom to, to lead that school in the, the weeks ahead. Father, we also want to thank you today for Charlotte Cox, who is our safeguarding officer for children and youth and vulnerable adults. We pray that you would give her wisdom in that role. And that, as well, Lord, we pray that you would give us wisdom to be able to make sure that the Abbey is a, and all of our churches in the villages are safe places where young people can discover your love and your reality. And Father, we also lift up to you our nation. And God, we ask that you would help us to turn our eyes to you. Lord, where things feel like they are crumbling and falling apart, we pray that as a nation that we would discover that you are a firm foundation. We pray that churches across our nation, across denominations, would, we would rise up and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And Father, we want to pray as well for ourselves. You might want to put your hands out in an attitude of receiving from the Lord. Father, we are your sheep. We need you to be our shepherd. We need you to lead us along a pathway that you have planned for us. So we pray, Father, that you would strengthen us and that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit and that you would speak to us through your word and through Dick, who's going to be speaking to us in a moment. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The reading this morning is taken from Exodus 32, commencing at verse 7. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down, because your people whom you brought up out of Egypt, have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. But Moses sought the favour of the Lord his God. 
O Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people, whom you brought out of Egypt with a great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger, relent and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all this land. I promise them, and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. And the reading continues in Exodus chapter 34, starting at verse 4. So Moses chiselled out two stone tablets like the first ones and went up Mount Sinai early in the morning as the Lord had commanded him. And he carried the two stone tablets in his hands. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Hello everybody. In our reading today, we read that God is angry. It's as if God has disowned the Israelites. He says to Moses, your people whom you brought up out of Egypt. Is God capricious? No, I don't think so. Is he justified in his anger? Yes, I think he is. What's God most upset about? I think it's, it's simple, isn't it? The people have become corrupt. They've turned away from God's commands. They've made idols and they're out of control. They're running wild as we, uh, if we read on into verse 25. They've made a golden calf. They've forgotten. But Moses intercedes. And we read, Moses sought the favour of the Lord his God. Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought up out of Egypt with a mighty hand? That's verse 11. And Moses reminds God and himself of the promise that God made to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob or Israel. He reminds God and he reminds himself. He says, your people whom you brought out of Egypt is what God says to Moses. And Moses is reminding God that they are God's people, not Moses' people. He's reminding them, he's reminding God of, of the time when God called Moses, he said, I've seen the misery of my people. This is Exodus 3. I've seen the people of my people. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. So God remembers his covenant with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And, and the covenant promise was blessing for the people, blessing for all people, for all nations. Well, you might think, well, what was special about Moses that uh, made him able to um, have this robust interchange with God? He wasn't really any different from any of us, actually. He was quick-tempered. He was, uh, he's 
was a killer, maybe even a murderer. He was impulsive. He lacked in courage. He was unwilling to do as he was asked. If you remember back in Exodus 3, God asked him to do um, work for him. And Moses said, not me, uh, and listed a whole raft of excuses. Uh, and he said, send someone else, not me. And, and he lacked faith as well, I think, back then. And yet, and yet, something changes. And, and he's given a second chance, isn't he? By the Lord and the Lord sees in Moses something he can use what was necessary was for Moses to say okay I'll give it a go so Moses has this interchange with God and Moses identifies with the people he doesn't shirk his responsibility as uh, the US Republican Party seems to be doing and as the ex-president of the United States seems to be doing. He doesn't claim to be different. He says, forgive us, forgive our wickedness and sin. Take us as your inheritance. That's in verse nine. We didn't actually read that. Forgive our wickedness and sin. Take us as your inheritance. So what about us? Have we been quick to forget God's grace and mercy to us? Have we forgotten that he brought us out of our own darkness, misery, slavery to sin, lack of direction? And he opened up the door to live life with him, life to the full. God's righteous anger is something to be reckoned with isn't it the people forget what he's done they worship what are not gods they disobey God's commands and if they disobey this one then they'll fail in everything else too for example being the fulfillment of God's promise of blessing to all people building and living in a society that is fair and built on principles of love and care for God and neighbour. And if they forget that, they will forget justice and compassion, which is what God seems to me to be a lot about. A God of justice, a God of compassion. And when he speaks to Moses, as we read, he says, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. God wants his people to live in a society that honours everyone and honours him, that takes care of the poor and the needy. And if God's people can't even keep one commandment, not idolising things they've made by their own hands, what hope of any of the other commandments? So what did Moses do? I think what he does is he accepts the situation God has opened his eyes to the disaster and Moses sees the need. And, and Moses acknowledges the wrong and his own failure too. He says uh, later on, forgive. And if not, if you're not going to forgive, then blot me out. And Moses says, forgive us our wickedness and sin. And Moses intercedes doesn't he he asks God and he reminds God of his promises and he reminds himself and then he acts he makes more tablets and he goes back up that scary mountain and the result the Lord passed in front of Moses proclaiming the Lord, the Lord, 
the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. God forgives. And we surely should do the same. So what can we do? I think we need to be willing to accept what we see and be open to God's hand on our lives. We need to open our eyes to the wrong and terrible things that are going on in the world and listen to God's guidance. And we need to acknowledge the wrong we see and we need to accept our own part in it. When we buy the cheapest without looking where it's come from and checking the supply chains that so often are built on exploitation, our daughters put us to shame because they want they always want to buy ethically sourced and produced items. The world's richest man runs or ran, I don't know whether things have changed much, but in uh, in 2016, a few years ago, there were stories about the warehouses, Amazon's warehouses. Uh, the workers slept in tents nearby to avoid having to pay the £10 a day Amazon bus fare, which they couldn't afford, otherwise they, they would not be uh, earning enough. And when we get drawn into stuff online that's less than wholesome, that's or always based on exploitation. We need to acknowledge our own part in this. And we need to offer our apologies and ask God's forgiveness and say that sorry and really mean it that we want to change. And we need to intercede. We need to get serious about prayer. And we don't we mustn't be surprised if that serious prayer leads to action. Moses chiseled out two more tablets, went up the mountain again. And we need to do something. We need to act. There are a thousand things to be concerned about. Of course, we want to be able to tell people the good news of Jesus and his love for us and his salvation. Of course we do. But it's not the whole story, is it? The Bible is the story of, God, of God's love, his justice, his compassion, his desire for all people to live in peace under their own vine, under their own fig tree, as the prophet Micah has it in Micah 4. I have plenty of space and time for sitting under my vine and fig tree. But what am I doing to help those who have no vine, no fig tree, no home, no land, no clothing, no family? Precious little, I'm ashamed to say. We as individuals, as the church, as the church, can play our part in fighting injustice and exploitation and trafficking and climate change. The list is almost endless. And Moses' example shows us some things. He shows us, um, well, let's ask a question. Is it okay to say it's not my fault? I don't think it is. I think we have to identify and accept our own part in the ills of the world. Is it okay to close our eyes to unrighteousness, injustice, slavery, and the other ills of God's world, this beautiful world he's made that we are wrecking. I don't think it is. It's not good enough. Is it good enough to say God's in control so we don't have to do anything? Surely not. God asks us to act. Just look at Moses' example. And I think like Moses, we can sometimes get so bound up in our own inadequacies and our own feeling of inability to do anything that we resist or are blind to opportunities. I want to say, let's take those opportunities. And I want to say this, that prayer is a virtuous circle. 
I have no idea how it works. God opens our eyes to something and we see injustice, we cry against it, we intercede. And God works with us as we pray and he prompts us and things change. His spirit prompts us and we pray. And I believe it starts with encountering the living, loving creator God. We don't come to darkness, gloom and storm as Hebrews 12, the writer to Hebrews 12 starts off. Um, we don't come to darkness, gloom and storm, to a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them. The writer is talking about the mountain, Mount Sinai. But he goes on to say this. We encounter the living God. We come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. We come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. We come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. What wonderful words, what encouragement. This is to whom we come. We encounter the living God, not on a scary mountain, but as he speaks to us in his love and compassion and asks us to acknowledge, to accept, to intercede for those around us and to do something for him and his world. This is where we come. This is where we come to worship, to pray and to be renewed in strength to do his bidding. May we be open to his leading. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, we come to you, the living God. And we ask your forgiveness for the times we've shut our eyes, for the times we said we don't need to do anything for the times we've ignored the plight of those around us. And we ask you, Lord, that you would help us not just to acknowledge those things, but to get into prayer for our world, to for prayer for those around us, prayer that we might work with you and for you in your kingdom, in your world, bringing about justice and righteousness and compassion, because you are a God of loving, righteous compassion. The Lord, the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy. We come to you and pray your help, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. He has
marvellous absolutely splendid uh, a huge thank you to all of those who are in front of the camera and those who are behind and those who are involved in the preparation terrific uh, this is uh, the end of our service but do join us for a zoom if you'd like to and do if you would like to support the abbey and we do need it uh, do go to the website and look up giving and do see what you can do for us. That would be simply wonderful. Thank you to all those that give and support us. If you have any questions, uh, do get in contact with vicar at malmesburyabbey.com or check the website www.malmesburyabbey.com. You may have real questions about house groups. Please get in contact with Helen uh, or myself, or if you'd like to join the online house group, Catherine at malmesburyabbey.com. If you'd like to join Alpha, there is an opportunity still to join Alpha, you or a friend. Uh, that would be Catherine at malmesburyabbey.com. We do need uh, to encourage you to uh, join us over Ash Wednesday. Uh, we have two major things which are going on. There's our Holy Communion, which will be on uh, YouTube and you can get it on the website. Or you can join Mark Siddle who's a clergy colleague from Draycott, who is going to be um, doing a retreat over Ash Wednesday. That's Wednesday the 17th. Do join us if you'd like to, and there will be information in the newsletter or on the website. Next Sunday is one of the big ones. Uh, we're going to be joining with Woodbridge. Uh, Matt, who is curate with both of our benefices, is going to be leading the service and it's one of the ways that we can work together across the mission area. So do join us if you'd like to. And that would be absolutely splendid. And I am now going to do the blessing. I don't think there's any more uh, that I need to say. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Take care. God bless. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Have a good week.